الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My dear brothers and sisters, I greet you with a greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Allah. Peace and blessings be upon our Prophet, upon his family, his companions, and all those who follow his path till the last day. Inshallah, in this Friday's reminder, I decided to talk about this very important topic, and that is diseases of the heart. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned in one of his hadiths and he said be aware in the body there is a piece of flesh if that is sound the whole body is sound if that piece of flesh is corrupt the whole body is corrupt Wherely, this piece of flesh is the heart and our prophet ali salatu salam meant the spiritual heart my dear brothers and sisters when the heart is sound it is very easy to recognize the truth and the rest of the organs and the rest of the limbs will follow the heart. If the heart is sick, and then you won't be able to recognize what is truth, truth and what is false. It's just like this, that sick patient. When he, when he is sick, he will become vulnerable for other infections and diseases. The same thing with when someone has a, a sick heart. He will be vulnerable for, for whispers of shaitan and doubts as well. A lot of people say that we have clean hearts because they're not able to identify the sicknesses and diseases of the heart that people have. It is very important, my dear brothers and sisters, and the only way we'll be able to get rid of these diseases is if we recognize them first, if we acknowledge that we have weaknesses, if we acknowledge that we have issues. And once we recognize those, those diseases of our hearts, and then it will be very easy for us to remove those diseases slowly. And the recipe is in the Holy Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, every single one of us we might go through some diseases of the heart and there are so many out there so many out there there is envy there is jealousy there is enmity there is pride there is ego there is laziness all these are considered to be diseases of the spiritual heart of a muslim so it is very very important my dear brothers and sisters and i only decided to talk about four of them and inshallah in the near future we'll talk about some other diseases of the heart so inshallah this will help all of us to be able to recognize them and inshallah we'll be able to get rid of them as soon as possible ya rabbal alameen first my dear brothers and sisters we'll talk about laziness and this is one of the diseases of the heart that a lot of people don't understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Holy Quran and he said and that they come not to pray except while they are lazy and that they do not spend except while they are unwilling so they're not willing to spend and when they go to pray they are being lazy so my dear brothers and sisters if we pray while we feel lazy that is a recipe uh, for disaster so it is very very important for all of us to understand that if we are lazy to pray to do one of the most important things in Islam how about other things my dear brothers and sisters so it is very important for for all of us that we are here and we understand that sometimes we feel lazy we want to sit down and watch TV and do other things but at the same time if that causes us to be lazy uh, while we want to pray and then we should get rid of those things that makes us lazy my dear brothers and sisters what are some of the things that can get rid of laziness in Islam number one it is very important to make lots of dua because even our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he made a dua that actually included laziness my dear brothers and sisters and he said I take refuge in you 
from anxiety and sorrow, weakness and laziness, stinginess and cowardice, the burden of debts, and from being overpowered by men. So even our Prophet وسلم, acknowledged laziness and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him from laziness, subhanAllah. If our Prophet والسلام, did that, how about us, my dear brothers and sisters? Number two, always disrupt those harmful habits that we have. What makes me lazy? If, it's, if, if that is the, the TV, if that is the, the social media, if that is just sitting on, on the couch and putting my feet up. So we have to identify what is making us lazy to the point that we are lazy even to, to do our prayers. And then we have to get rid of those bad habits, my dear brothers and sisters. And also, it is very, very important to live a healthy life. You know, to, 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 to have a good, to eat a good diet and also to do some exercise because when you have energy, you will be able to pray and not feeling lazy, my dear brothers and sisters. Number two, which is pretty much almost against a laziness, that is hastiness. And that is uh, also very, very important because I see a lot of people out there Sometimes even we are included in, in that group of people when we always haste, when we always want to reach to that destination without thinking that the pros and, and cons. So, you know, it is very important. And sometimes being too hasty, actually it makes us forget all the beautiful things that Allah has bestowed upon us. So it is very important, my dear brothers and sisters, and even our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in one of his hadiths and he said it is necessary that you do not become hasty this is what he said to his companions sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it was said ya rasulullah what what does it mean being hasty men our prophet ali sallallahu wasallam answered by saying when one says i supplicated to allah but allah did not answer me so even in duas even in supplications we we want things to happen quick but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't work with your with your watch allah works with his own watch with his own time and allah answers when you need that dua the most my dear brothers and sisters so it is very very important and and how to get rid of of those uh, of this bad habit or of of this disease of the heart number one is always to have patience because even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Holy Quran and said Rabbana afriq alayna sabran wa tawaffana muslimin or Lord pour upon us patience and let us die as Muslims in submission to you so number one always if you want to get rid of this hastiness number one is always to be patient even when you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even when, you, when you're about to, to do something in life, even if you're, when you're about to, 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 uh, to decide something, or even when you're about to say something, always be patient and think before you act. Number two, always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because by being hasty, and I see a lot of our youth being hasty, Sometimes they, they, they want to reach to that destination. They want to ha have a house very quick. They want to have a good job. They want to have this, they want to have that. And without being patient, sometimes they can fall into, into haram easily. That's why people deal with drugs. Why? Because they want to they wanna get to, to that money very quickly, subhanAllah. Even if that takes by dis displeasing Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be grateful. Uh, and also very important my dear brothers and sisters always contemplate the pros and cons before you take that decision before you make that haste you know take one step back and think all the pros all the and cons and then make a decision don't haste because hastiness also is from from shaitan number three my dear brothers and sisters one of the diseases of the heart is misplaced love 
subhanallah when we talk with a lot of people and, and we we ask them who do you love the most a lot of them say I, I love my spouse or i love my children or i love this person or i love that person and later on because those things and those people that they love they are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore there is weaknesses in every single one of us so if, if someone says I love my spouse more than anything else and may Allah forbid anything happens later on and they get divorced he gets heartbroken because he plays that love in, in, in creation and not in the Creator someone who never disappoints you and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my dear brothers and sisters why we see so many people heartbroken why we see so many people depressed why we see so many people disappointed because they place their love in, in the wrong people or in the wrong beings instead of placing our love in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's always there for us for us he always provides for us he will never disappoint us my dear brothers and sisters everything else all the creation of Allah has weaknesses in them including us human beings sometimes we we love that person and later on he 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 um, he lies or he does something to you and he says subhanallah i loved you more than anything else and then people go into depression and all all these sicknesses so one of the diseases of the heart that i there to be is misplaced love we should place our love in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the things how to get rid of this is to fear and to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how we can love Allah if we don't even know him so in order for us to love him first we have to to know him to know our creator or maker or sustainer how do we know him by lear learning and studying his names and his attributes by going out there and see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything that Allah has created around us Allah created so we can see and we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more we learn about him more we fall in love with, with, with our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as I said notice the faults of creation everything else everyone else if you if you place your love in them one day you will get disappointed sooner or later so place your love number one in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and number four my dear brothers and sisters one of the, the the most severe diseases of the heart is anger and a lot of people do not acknowledge this you know, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Holy Quran and, and He said, And heal the hearts of a believing people and remove the anger of their hearts. So even the Holy Quran acknowledges that there is anger in every single one of us. So there is nothing wrong with that. But once you utter that anger, once you let it out, and then you will be responsible for that, my dear brothers and sisters. If you keep it within yourself, there is nothing wrong. So if you know that you have this weakness, you have this disease, there is nothing to be worried because we are human being and no one is perfect. But it is important to acknowledge this and also to see what makes you angry what triggers that anger and if you think that this is the person or by watching tv or or spending a lot of time on social media and then get rid of those things so those things will not trigger that anger that you you're experiencing my dear brothers and sisters how many people have done so many things how many people have said so many things that later on they that they had to 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 regret and apologize so we don't want to, to to be in that kind of situation when we have to apologize to other people instead of if we feel angry we have to see what triggers that anger and try to get a, a rid of those things as soon as we can my dear brothers and sisters our prophet Ali Salatusam told us and he told us the recipe and he said if you feel angry to the point that you're not able to control your anger 
He said, sit down, subhanAllah. And he said, even then, if you're not able to control that and you're still angry, lie down, subhanAllah. Why? Because when you're, when you're sitting down, it is less possible for you to strike someone. When you're so close to, to, to that person and you're that angry to the point that maybe you're not able to control you, you know, you, yourself, you might hit that person, you might strike that person. That's why Islam teaches us to sit down. Islam teaches us even to lie down. Islam teaches us to, to, to do ablution, to do wudu. Why? Because just like the, the water extinguishes uh, uh, fire, same thing with wudu extinguishes anger, my dear brothers and sisters. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that we are able to acknowledge the diseases of our hearts and be able with Allah's help to remove and get rid of those diseases, Ya Rabbal Alameen. My dear brothers and sisters, until next Friday, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.